For the second set of notes in section 12.4, I'd like you to work through the following example problems on your own. Once you're ready, pause the video, work through the problems, and then press play again to compare your answers with mine. For the cylinder to find the total surface area, we have to take the lateral area and add on the area of the bases. The lateral area can be found by taking the perimeter of the base, or the circumference of the circle, and multiplying it by the height. Then to add on the area of the two bases, well those are both circles, so we're doing two times pi r squared since those bases are congruent. Let's substitute the given information. We should eventually get that the total surface area of the cylinder is 350 pi units squared. To find the volume of the cylinder, we're going to take the area of the base and multiply it by the height of the cylinder. Since the base is a circle, we could do pi r squared times h. Substituting in the given information, we get that the volume is 882 pi units cubed. Please write units cubed. I wrote units squared there by accident. Keep in mind, volume is units cubed, not units squared. Let's compare the difference between surface area and volume. To find the lateral surface area, we took the perimeter of the base, or the circumference, and multiplied it by the height to get that outer region. And then to find the volume, we took the area of the base, which is the circle here, and multiplied it by the height to give us all the space inside of the object. Moving on to the next problem, it was a rectangular prism in which we were given the base here. We want to find the total surface area and volume. The surface area can be found by taking the lateral area and adding on the area of the two bases, which are the rectangles. So we could find the lateral area by taking the perimeter of one of the bases and multiplying it by the height. So it would be 14 times 12. Then from there, we're going to find the area of one of the bases, which would be 12, and multiply that by 2, because we have two bases total. So we're adding 168 and 24 to get that the total surface area of this figure is 192 units squared. Now to find the volume, we could do area of the base times height. Well, since the base is a rectangle, we could just do base times height times height. But another way you may have seen this is we could consider the base by multiplying the dimensions length times width. And then we can multiply it by the height of the entire prism. So we could find the volume of this prism by doing length times width times height to give us a total volume of 144 units cubed. You could only use this formula if it's a rectangular prism. For any other type of prism, you will have to determine what the base is and find the area of that base using your prior knowledge of area formulas and then multiply it by the height of the prism. Finally, for number four, we're given some information in which we have to work backwards. We're actually given the volume of this cube is 729 units cubed, and we want to find the side. Well, we know that all sides of a cube are congruent, so I'm going to call each dimension x there. And then we know that we find the volume of this cube by taking the area of the base and multiplying it by the height. Well, the area of the base can be found by doing x times x. And then the height of that prism connects the two bases, which is another x, which is the red segment there. Well, x times x times x is x cubed, and we're setting that equal to 729 since we already know the volume. How do we solve for x here? We have to take the cubed root of both sides of the equation. Taking the cubed root of 729 leaves us with a value of 9. So one side of the cube is 9 units.